think some of our most memorable experiences are the ones we simply cannot explain. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, some things are just too frightening and too strange to forget. I have gathered some stories from my friends and followers. Everything you are about to hear is completely true and totally inexplicable. Get yourself something to drink, sit back, and, well, I would tell you to relax, but you might struggle with that. When it comes to choosing a creepy experience to discuss, it's difficult for me to know where to start. A lot of strange things happened while we were living at our old house, though most of these things were witnessed by my family members rather than myself. I've chosen this particular story because the events were witnessed by not one, not two, but three people, and we still have no explanation for those events twelve years later. It was night time in January 2008. My dad was at work, and so me and my sister were reading in bed with our mum. This was common on the nights when we girls had the house to ourselves. We were all engrossed in our books, when suddenly I heard what sounded like tiny bare feet running across the wooden floor. About three seconds later, I heard the same sound but this time the feet appeared to be running towards the door and out of the room. I looked at my mum, hoping she would say she heard the sound too, which she said she had. My sister, who was very young at the time, had also heard it. For a few seconds we all sat there, listening. There were some more sounds and we quickly became quite distressed. My mum got out of bed and headed for her phone, which was charging at the opposite end of the room. She called my dad, who told her to call the police. The police arrived along with my dad, and they searched every inch of the house, as well as the garden. I don't recall where I was when the search was taking place, but I do remember being told that nothing and nobody had been found. We were still shaken up, so my dad agreed to drive us to my grandparents' house once he'd returned some stuff to work that he wasn't really supposed to have brought home with him. While we waited for Dad to come home, we started hearing noises again. We were downstairs, and the noises were coming from upstairs. It sounded like someone was walking from room to room. The steps weren't as sprightly as the tiny bare feet we'd heard earlier. I was so frightened that I started retching. I don't think my sister really understood what was going on, but seeing me upset made her cry. When my dad got back, we went upstairs to collect some belongings. I remember asking him to come into my room with me because I didn't want to be alone. I grabbed way more stuff than I needed. I was only ten, and I didn't want to leave my cuddly toys behind. I packed a bag, raced back outside to the car, and we drove off into the night. I don't remember what happened when we got to my grandparents' house, nor do I remember the days that followed but we never worked out what exactly the noises were. All houses make noises, whether it's an old house or a new house, I think that's just a fact. But you grow to learn the different noises your own house makes, and what we heard that night was like nothing we'd ever heard before. The similarity between what we heard and the sound of a toddler running around was truly uncanny. We also never heard anything like it again after that night. Other very weird things happened around the house, as I suggested at the start, but nothing so unsettling that we had to call the police again. It will forever remain one of the scariest nights of my life. This past year I was studying abroad in Japan, and I lived in a city on the outskirts of Nagoya called Nishin. To get to Nagoya you can take a train from a station located about 10 minutes away from where my dorm was. One night, me and my friend were walking back from the station to our dorm, the quickest route taking us around a residential area. For some reason it wasn't lit up very well at all. There were dull street lights on each street, and that was it. As we were walking, we could see a girl by herself in front of us. She had longish black hair, which appeared to cover her face as she presumably looked down at her phone. The way she was walking was very off-putting. 
It was as if she was drunk, moving forward but stumbling side to side. I suddenly felt very sick and scared at the same time. I grabbed my friend's hand and pulled him across to the other side of the road. I tried to get a look at her as we turned into the next street, but it was so dark and she was wearing dark clothes, so I couldn't really see. My friend said something to me along the lines of, so you felt that too? And I literally had to tell him to shut up until we got to the convenience store outside our dorm because it was well lit and I felt like I was holding back tears. He said that he tried to get a look at her face and it was just black, like beyond her hair was literally just black. He described it like a void instead of a human being. We literally spoke about it that night and haven't really spoken about it since because we're both pretty sceptical people, but we are so sure that that wasn't just a drunk girl. We both felt the exact same dread without having to say a word, and we both said the way she was walking was very strange. One night I was staying at an old best friend's house. We were alone. We used to enjoy watching Sam and Colby on YouTube. In one particular video they use regular playing cards to summon spirits. I think the summoning ritual involves 12 cards, a candle and a dark place. You can invite any spirit and ask questions, and each symbol on the cards represents a different answer. You're supposed to move your hand over the cards until it feels tingly. Whichever card your hand feels tingly over is the one the spirit is using to answer your question. My friend set up the ritual and asked if I wanted to join in. I don't mess with that kind of stuff, so I said no. My friend got into contact with someone and started to ask questions. She asked if they died in her apartment. They said yes. She asked if they were murdered. They said maybe. Suddenly the candle started to flicker a lot, and the flame was growing. I told my friend to stop in case something bad happened, but she wanted to ask one more question. Do you want to kill me? Yes. I darted across the room and turned on the lights. I blew out the candle and made my friend pour salt on the deck of cards before throwing it away, thus ending the ritual. The closest I've gotten to experiencing something paranormal was back in 2015. I woke up in the middle of the night and was met by three very tall, loosely human-like things watching me. They didn't do or say anything and neither did I. Eventually I just went back to sleep. Not long after that night, one of the kittens from my cat's litter passed away and I had the unfortunate job of burying it in the back garden. A little while after that, my dog became very sick and had to be put to sleep. After these tragic events, I thought of those three strange figures as angels of death, and I assigned the passing of the kitten and my dog to two of them. I waited in fear for weeks, wondering whose death the third figure could represent. Fortunately, that third death never happened. Eventually, I just chalked everything up to unfortunate coincidence. I had been actively hoping to experience something paranormal in my life up until that point so it made sense for me to initially believe that what I'd seen was just that. This being said, about six months after I'd seen the strange figures in my room, my dad suffered a minor stroke. Sometimes I wonder if that third figure had tried and failed to take him.